Hey everybody, Christopher Ride here, and welcome back to our next installment of the Superhero Showcase, brought to you by the lovely people creating Marvel's Midnight Suns. Today we're doing a deep dive on Tony Stark's buddy from the Abbey Forge, a man capable of wielding powerful arcane spells and mystical artifacts, a man whose alliterative spells are as complex in nature as they are to pronounce. Most importantly, the man who I'm giving my personal Best Dressed of the Squad award. It's the Sorcerer Supreme himself, Dr. Stephen Strange. Now, Dr. Strange is the ultimate support hero, capable of easily fitting into most squads. Heal an ally? Yeah. Completely conceal them? Absolutely. Grant the protection? Why not? Cure them? Yes. Restore combat items? What's that, you might ask? Stay tuned. Although he's capable of fitting with most squads, he will excel most when paired with other superheroes who aren't consuming all of the heroism. Some of his strongest abilities revolve around a mechanic called Enhanced. Up until now, you've mostly seen cards that have a flat heroism cost, but when you spend more heroism on them, cards with Enhanced will gain additional benefits. I'll get into some examples later on, but while we explore what Doctor Strange is capable of, use your own Eye of Agamotto to learn a few new mechanics you may not have heard of yet. The first skill that we're going to cover today is called Astral Meditation. On the surface, this seems peaceful and serene, but this card can potentially turn the tide of dangerous battles single-handedly. Astral Meditation is going to restore combat items. If you haven't heard of those before, combat items are single-use consumables that you can choose before a mission and use at any time. Casting Astral Meditation will see Strange look to the skies and he'll conjure up an extra use of a previously used combat item. As if that wasn't enough, he's also going to grant the team two additional redraws. A couple people I can think of that might like that. And he's going to generate above average heroism too. If you upgrade this, you can restore additional combat items. And one of the late game mods can grant the ability to draw the last attack card that was played. Now, I don't know about you, but I've heard that Doctor Strange is a little bit of a thick cloak. But if you can break through that and build his friendship levels, you'll be well rewarded. His greater good passive ability can generate a ton of heroism that he thrives on so much. At level 1 of this passive, he'll have a 50% chance to gain 1 heroism per turn, but you get that to level 2, and you'll have a 50% chance of getting 2 heroism per turn. This is actually huge. Heroism is so important in this game, and for him to just be dropping heroism very regularly is pretty massive. You can make a solid argument that Greater Good is one of the best passives in the game, actually. Yikes, indeed. It took all this for me to realize. But I'm thankful I did. Now imagine, if you will, one of your best buds is in a dire situation. Multiple Hydra forces are about to pummel them so hard they won't be able to feel the vapors of Valtor in their face afterwards. Well, I got a very conveniently named card for you then. Playing the vapors of Valtor will allow you to conceal either Doctor Strange or an ally for that turn, making them completely untargetable. The ultimate save. At higher levels, Vapors of Altur will also be capable of healing and potentially applying too fast as well. So far, Strange has shown that he's a savvy spellcasting Sorcerer Supreme with spells that scale to satisfying states. I couldn't resist. Instead of targeting individual allies like Vapors of Altur, Strange can use the Shield of the Seraphim to help everybody at once. By granting everyone resist, he's letting them block the next instance of incoming damage. When upgraded, this card can also cure, and one example of a late game mod could grant some extra card draw. Oh, and of course, hearkening back to what we talked about earlier, it can be enhanced with extra heroism to add more instances of resist to everyone. The Captain America shield? That's got nothing on the Seraphim, let's be honest. You might be wondering, does Doctor Strange do any damage? Uh, yeah, he does a lot, actually. You don't get the title of Sorcerer Supreme if you don't have at least a little something extra hidden in that cloak. Now, you've built up a ton of heroism with this greater good passive, right? And now you get to reap the rewards. Summon in the Seven Sons of the Cinnabus, and you'll see what I mean. Strange's Midnight Sun's heroic ability is an AoE targeted spell that deals massive damage, and you can even enhance it with extra heroism. Investing in upgrades for it will lower the required heroism for enhancing, and can even allow you to redraw the card for some health recovery if you get lucky with a late game mod. So that brings us to the end of the de facto Doctor Strange deep dive. Remember, 
You're going to see a lot of him not only in combat, but also in the Abbey Forge as he handles research and artifact study. Speaking of seeing a lot of something, you need to see all of these hero showcases. They've been a blast to make, and I think you guys are really enjoying them, so thank you so much for continuing to watch. Check out the links down below for the playlist and all things Marvel's Midnight Suns. If you're not subscribed to the channel, we'd obviously appreciate that so we can easily update you with new Marvel's Midnight Suns content as soon as it's available. And subscribe to my personal channel at Christopher Odd to see more gameplay whenever I'm able to share that. Thanks again to Marvel and 2K for partnering with me on this series, and we will see you guys next time. Yeah.